Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of Simon Says. I'm Simon, and today we're going to talk about the hardware that I'm running my Home Assistant on. So let's have a look. So when I started on my Home Assistant journey, I just used an old Raspberry Pi 3 that I had laying around in the bottom drawer, along with an SD card that had been used on something else. I flashed the software, stuck it in the Raspberry Pi, powered it up, and the moment I put the URL in the browser, I was just amazed when that blue logo popped up on my screen. And I was even more amazed when it actually found a few items already on my network and offered to connect them. But after I'd been running it for a few weeks and had been watching a whole lot of YouTube videos, I realized that there would be some value in upgrading to a Raspberry Pi 4 and also an SSD card. Now I've left some links in the description below showing you the items that I've purchased um, so that you can get these for yourself if you want to. When I ordered my Raspberry Pi, I was really lucky it was just before these chip shortages starting to set in. So I managed to get it for a semi-reasonable price. So the Raspberry Pi 4 has apparently got a more powerful processor and comes in a number of RAM options. I decided to go for the 4 gig and that's worked really well for me. I also ordered the SSD card and decided to go with a brand name. I went with a Kingston because it's worth going for something that's branded. I believe some people have had some issues with the, the cheaper versions. I went for a 120 gig version and I thought that would be fine for running the Home Assistant and perhaps any sort of sound files or images I needed to load up. I also ordered the StarTech USB to SATA cable, which is one of the ones that has been recommended in the video I watched. I believe it's quite important to actually get one of the ones suggested because otherwise you might have issues setting it up. So I got that all running and it worked really, really well. Now, one of the issues I had was that when I started flashing the uh, ESP32s with ESP Home, I noticed the processor temperature was getting high and it was reaching close to 60 degrees Celsius. So I started looking for a cooling system. Um, I came across this really cool heatsink fan from S2Pi. I honestly couldn't resist the multicolored Perspex fan with the LEDs inside. Now that I've got this unit, um, it's much bigger than what would be able to fit in the case that I had before. So I needed to find another case because so I came across this case from GeekPi, also made by S2Pi, and it's 3D printed. It's got these two Perspex panels on each side with some holes to allow for enough ventilation. And it even comes with a little OLED screen that you can use to display the stats of your Pi while it's running. Now, unfortunately, I haven't managed to get the screen working. Um, there are some instructions about how to get it working with a normal Raspberry Pi software, but I haven't found anything to actually explain how to run it with Home Assistant. So if any of you know how to do this, please let me know. The last component I added was the Sonoff Zigbee stick to allow me to as communicate with my Zigbee devices, which are all from Xiaomi. I initially set them up with the Xiaomi Hub version 2, but after a couple of months, for some reason, when I was playing around, it managed to fall off and I never managed to get it up and running again. So I ordered the Sonoff stick and it's been really, really awesome. Easy to set up, connected up pretty easily. Um, I've got a couple of PIR and door and window sensors and also a couple of buttons. I'm planning to set up a Zigbee repeater device upstairs so that I can use some more Zigbee devices upstairs because the signal seems to be a bit intermittent on the upstairs level of my house. Now, I've heard lots of people explain the benefits of running their home assistant in a Docker container on a NUC or a computer, and I can totally see the benefits of this type of installation and the speed that you get. But at this stage, I quite like running it on a Raspberry Pi and it's easy to install, easy to communicate with other components. 
So overall, I'm really happy with the way that my Home Assistant is running on the Raspberry Pi 4. It's working great for me, but to tell the truth, I have ordered the Home Assistant Yellow and I'm so excited. It's the first starter program that I've ever actually signed up for. And the only reason I did it was that I really trust the guys at Home Assistant. So I knew they would come through with it. And I've watched some of the unboxings of the product. It looks amazing. And I'm really excited to hear as well about it having a Meta and Zigbee radio that can switch between the two. So that's really excited. So what I'm doing now, waiting for that to arrive. Don't think I've ever waited for anything as long as that, but anyway, it'll be here soon. So it'd be great to hear some ideas about what you guys think I could do with my Raspberry Pi 4 once the yellow arrives. Anyway, that's all for now. Have a great week. Bye then.